move on to our next team. This is team People to People. It's a made up a team made up of three Chevening and CSC alumni from the Dominic Dominican Republic and Russia. Um, again, I'm not sure who's taking which role, but we have Mildred Samboy and Serafima Ospinenko, Os, Osipenko. Um, so over to you. Yeah, it's uh, Mildred Samboy here. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for this opportunity. We are people to people. And uh, please, next slide. Uh, we would like to immediately go to the main challenges that we are facing as a country in the Dominican Republic. We are a small island development state, uh, mostly affected by climate shocks and these climate shocks impacting livelihoods. We are the 10th country in the world with the most vulnerable impact due to climate change. And also we are struggling with the human development index uh, and considerations related to economic growth, access to health, access to um, um, education and other issues uh, related to, uh, to a better life quality. This is also reflected in gender inequalities in the country in which unfortunately all these indexes when we immediately uh, develop a consideration of women's situation in the country and access to these three main autonomies such as political, uh, bodily autonomy and economic empowerment, we are still facing uh, struggles. In this sense, we wanted to go specifically to Josefa. Josefa lives in the Enriquillo uh, region in the Dominican Republic. And we wanted to do this proposal for with the people that are most affected because we cannot do actions without the people that are involved in it. So in this sense, we created this project together with Josefa uh, in which they clearly established the main challenges related to women uh, producers, uh, coffee producers in the region. They have insufficient funding. They are facing droughts, coffee rust, due to climate change process, deficiencies in soil restoration, limited access to fertilizers, deficiency of tools to work the crops and undervalue coffee prices and revenues. Next, next slide, please. So in this sense, we presented a solution that is called People to People, which is a program, policy program proposal, which aims to uh, develop a financing uh, process to create a hub for climate change adaptation in the region. Uh, due to related to crowdsourcing and crowdfunding mechanisms to enhance resources mobilization and respond, respond to climate change challenges for small and medium coffee entrepreneurs. The policy proposal is more developed in the region uh, because it connects small and medium coffee entrepreneurs with funding and expertise to adapt the farms uh, to, to the climate shocks that are happening right now. It, and it will reach through a blended fund to replenish insufficient resources uh, due to climate adaptation package complemented by a platform to exchange knowledge, which is the hub ecosystem that we have in the ending process. This package consists of two main components, uh, technological upgrade of farms such as advanced equipment, machinery, fertilizers, irrigation system, soil testing, basic training for climate change adaptation and moreover, will access to these hub ecosystem where people can share experiences, feedback on implemented measures. Uh, these also will deepen knowledge connecting with a specialist worldwide and partner with new suppliers. Can we go to the next slide, please? The impact obviously is community building. Uh, this is one of the main uh, associations in the region, the women coffee producers, also the land ownership and sustainable management, which unfortunately is one of the main issues in the entire country. People do not necessarily own the land or uh, have the empowerment to uh, produce it as established by Josefa in the entire process. And the third part is the adaptation and resiliency. Unfortunately, one of the main impacts in the, in the country is the roya, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the, the crop that is impacting the crop, uh, sorry. And also we are in the middle of the path of the hurricanes in the Caribbean. So each time this impact the, the Dominican Republic, all the crops are lost. And unfortunately, uh, that's the reason why the financing is one, one minute remaining to crowdsource and to work together with this. Next slide, please. The implementation, as we mentioned, is the blended finance fund. Uh, it might be scalable because we are also considering 
uh, here the, the Chipping community as one of the main actors and stakeholders, uh, the Dominican Chipping community, but also to make it scalable with uh, this example to the nationwide, but also to other countries in the Latin America region that we can establish this type of blend financing. Uh, the, the sustainability is also important in the process because we're willing to work together with the municipality and local authorities, with the coffee associations, with international cooperation already working in the, uh, in the space and the Dominican diaspora, which uh, today signifies an important impact in the economy of the Dominican Republic by the, the, all the remittances that are being established worldwide and in the country specifically. So the Dominican diaspora, the Dominican shipping community, but also Latin America and worldwide. So uh, with this mention already, uh, we're more than willing to continue the conversation and we are quite grateful for the opportunity. We can go to the last slide. We are quite grateful for the opportunity and we really hope to support Josefa and all the associations of women uh, coffee producers in the Dominican Republic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mildred. Um, I think I might have said in the beginning there that this was a team made of Chevening and CSC alumni, but it's actually just um, Chevening alumni on your team. So just a correction there. Great. Enrique has his hand up already. Um, over to you, Enrique, for a question. Yes, I wanted to ask you what would be the, uh, how would you uh, sustain, the, sustain the financing of the project uh, over time? So that is not just like, once uh, a crowdfunding and then like uh, is over, but like how would you sustain it over time? Yes, definitely. This is a good question. Thank you very much. We want to work together with the municipality and the hub creation process is the main uh, source of integration. As blended finance, that's why we want to have public sector and private sector sources together with uh, the Dominican diaspora, which has mean with the remittance. Uh, nowadays, many Dominicans outside of the country, they would like to implement or to invest money in many of these actions, but unfortunately, they don't have the window for that. So um, having the municipality as a local authority, then we might uh, completely develop that hub ecosystem inside the uh, automate, let's say, um, the official institution that is integrated into local policies. This is the main uh, part that we have the main resources as a public resources, because each municipality needs to have a minimum of resources already established. So we, uh, the private sector and together with the chiefening community and all the other diasporas, we might be able to maintain the financing over the time uh, because the baseline is the public uh, funding, but um, we complement it with the other uh, sources. I don't know if you want to say something. Yeah, I have a very small addition, like for the future plan, like uh, ideal situation, we would be able to implement blockchain and also cooperate with local banks like to attract invest, uh, uh, investments even like from individuals. So basically like implementing like DeFi or security tokens for this case, but we didn't cover it in this solution because like it would be too much. But yeah, for the future, yes, to diversify the access to funding and support. So it wouldn't be just like large amounts of money that people can support the community, but also like for the small investments as well. So yeah, I hope we answered the question. Yes, thank you very much.